You're all right. Okay. 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 All right. Well, if you're going to be feisty, it's okay. That's good. That means you're not dead if you're feisty. What's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So the questions have been coming in pretty hot and heavy when it comes to winterizer and final lawn prep, and that's for all of you guys, no matter where you live, north, south, east, or west. So I figured I'd come to you today and bring a video that's gonna talk about those final steps of the year, and then is it too late to put down a winterizer? Now it's gonna be different for the grass type, so make sure you watch this entire video, but we'll start with you guys up north with cool season grass, Kentucky bluegrass, perennial rye, and turf type tall fescue lawns. I know a bunch of y'all had snow that hit you on Halloween night because a bunch of people sent me pictures, but I think by now that's probably mostly gone. The key is to know though that you're not done yet, but you're definitely close and the signs are showing it. As far as a winterizer goes, that's kind of a marketing term. And when I say that, it just means the last application that you do for the year. And really that application isn't meant to provide very much if any benefit for you this year, it's really meant to provide all the benefit next year. Think of your winterizer like your pre-workout for spring 2020. You take it now and it's gonna kick in right as soil temperatures raise to 55 next spring. And because it's a pre-workout, that means we're gonna feed it with nitrogen because never forget, nitrogen drives the bus. Nitrogen drives the growth and nitrogen drives the green color that we're looking for before all of our neighbors. So real quick, take a look at this growth calendar for cool season turf. We are right here just entering winter and you can see we are just coming out of a major growth period. Now we're gonna go dormant all winter because remember the key is that the ground freezes in most cases where you have a cool season lawn. But look at here in the spring, it's a super fast ramp up and that's because of the shorter growing season. So cool season turf has to take off really fast. That's why high nitrogen is so important in your winterizer. This is opposed to warm season turf, which I said we're gonna talk about here very shortly, but you can see we don't start ramping up until the later spring and in some cases, even the early summer. So when you're looking for a winterizer fertilizer, nitrogen is the main thing you look for. And I'm gonna tell you right now, the best place to get a winterizer fertilizer is the cheapest place. And that's gonna be the back aisles of stores that carry fertilizer, but they don't carry it as a main you know, product in their line. Not a Home Depot, not a Lowe's, but actually like a Walmart or a Sam's Club or a Target store. Go to the back of the garden center and see what they've got on clearance. Chances are you're gonna get all kinds of really cool fertilizer with high nitrogen in it, and it'll be cheap and discounted and probably even on clearance. That's the fertilizer that you wanna get, cheap and easy. I don't care if it's fast release, slow release, quick release, no release, release now, release later, release all around. It's gonna have plenty of time to grind into the soil and do its thing. Again, we care about what it's gonna do next year. And so next, let's then talk about the timing. So the timing of your winterizer for cool season lawn is right after the final mowing of the year. You kind of know when that is. You've been feeling the ramp down as you've been taking care of it. A lot of you guys, that last mowing of the year, you don't look forward to it because you know that it kind of kicks you off into the winter time. But the good news there is, is that when you feel that, when you know, all right, this is the last mow of the year, that's also when you do that final throwdown. So that means you get to do a double whammy. You get to do a last mow and a last throw. Now I recommend you get down a full pound of nitrogen nitrogen in this application, and there's a lot of different ways you can get it, again, depending on the fertilizer that you use. If you got stuff left over in the garage, by all means, use that. But again, if you need to buy something, I recommend you look for those clearance racks like I mentioned before. And so with that, let's just do a little bit of quick math so you understand how to get down a full pound of nitrogen for your winterizer. Okay, let's start with this because this is the kind of thing that you're probably going to find on the clearance section of Target or Walmart like I was talking about. Now, this says Southern Lawn Food, but that's just marketing wank because you'll see up here they put apply to any grass type and that's because they probably distribute this all throughout the south up into the transition zone and who knows where else it ends up. The truth of the matter is this is just nutrients and that's one of the keys when you're looking for that winterizer fertilizer is you don't want anything that's got insect control, weed control, fungicide in it, none of that. You just want fertilizer. So if it says triple action, double action, 
and quadruple action, stay away from that. You just want something that's only gonna have fertilizer in it, and that's what you can tell here. Turf builder lawn food. It doesn't say lawn food plus insect killer or anything like that, it's just lawn food. So that's the first thing to look at. But what really matters though is we gotta get into the meat of her, and you're gonna get into the meat on the backside. Now I don't know why Scott's hides the analysis like they do, but you can see here, way down here in the fine print, that the Scott's Southern Lawn Food here is a 32010. There's what it looks like. So that is called the analysis 32010. That's what that is. And what this stands for is N for nitrogen, P for phosphorus, and K for potassium. This is the one we care most about for cool season lawn. And these are percentages. So what this is telling you is that 32% of everything in this bag is nitrogen. It's 0% phosphorus and 10% of everything in here is potassium. Now I don't care about the potassium unless you have a soil test that says you need it. We're going to have frozen ground here all winter anyway with cool season lawns. So I don't really care about the potassium. Remember that growth calendar we looked at. I really care about the nitrogen so that in the spring when the lawn needs it, it can push it out really, really fast. So once again, we know that this product is 32% and I want you to put down one full pound of nitrogen or more for your winterizer. Don't go over a pound and a half, but let's just go for that full pound. We know that of everything in this bag, 32% of it is nitrogen. And remember, everything we do in lawn care is based on 1,000 square foot increments, everything. That's how it works. That's why this even tells you that this, oh my gosh. That's why this even tells you that this bag covers 5,000 square feet. That's called the bag rate, by the way, but you can see it's in 1,000 square foot increments. So every time we talk, we're talking in 1,000 square foot increments. So if I wanna get down one full pound of nitrogen across every 1,000 square feet of my lawn, then that means I need to put down right about three pounds of that product. So three pounds of this stuff at 32% nitrogen will then contain 0.96 pounds of nitrogen. 0.96 is close enough to one, close enough for government work and jazz, of course. So let's review that again. 32% of this is nitrogen. That means if I put down three pounds of this across 1,000 square feet, I will get 32 times three, which is 0.96 pounds or one pound of nitrogen. So three pounds per 1,000 square foot of this product will get you your one pound of nitrogen that you need for your winterizer. This is a quarter of a bag of Carbon X here, right? This is a really great way to show the product, I'm sure, but long story in the short of it, let's pull a little bit out. A lot of you have this and you wanna know if this is a good winterizer. This is a 2404. Remember, everything we do is in 1,000 square foot increments. So if this is a 2404, it's 24% nitrogen. So if you wanna get close to that one pound, you would put down four pounds per thousand square feet because what's four times 24? It's 0.96. Okay, let's do one more here. This is the Sunnyland All Natural Biosolid. It's a 640. It's a Melorganite clone. If you get Melorganite, it works just as well. I just don't happen to have any right now, but Melorganite biosolids like this, these also make a great winterizer. But there's something you're gonna discover here. Because the analysis is 640, that means that the product is 6% nitrogen. Remember, 1,000 square foot is still the standard. But because it's 6% nitrogen, it takes a lot more pounds on the ground to pull the nutrients out of an organic. That means that you need 16 pounds across every 1,000 square feet because 16 times 6 is 0.96. So in order to get that full pound, you need 16 pounds on the ground. And that's something to illustrate for the future for you guys when you're choosing fertilizer of any kind for any time of the year is the nitrogen is typically what drives the bus. The other stuff is there if you need it, if you have a soil test that says you do, but nitrogen is the main element that you need. And in this case, a full organic 16 pounds on the ground to get one pound of nitrogen per thousand. This is a hybrid, the Carbon X. Hybrid means it's got synthetic fertilizer in there, that's what the white stuff is, but then it's also got the funky fresh goodness of the biochar and the organic chicken litter and humic acid and all that fun stuff. So you don't need quite as much pounds on the ground of that because it is juiced with the synthetics four pounds per thousand in order to get 0.96 pounds of N per thousand. And then you have the full synthetic up here, the Scots. You only need three pounds per thousand. So less pounds on the ground to get the same result of nitrogen, but none of the funky fresh goodness. So it's a matter of full organic, hybrid, or full synthetic. All of these have their place and none of them are bad. This one will be the cheapest on your budget, especially if you find it at the back corner of a Target this one adds a lot of funky fresh goodness into your soil along with quick release and fast results. And this one, slow and low, great for the soil all around, all the time. 
take a combination of these three and you're good. But right now we mainly just care about a winterizer. So you choose which one you want and throw her down. Another question I get a lot about cool season lawns is should I mow lower just before winter? And the answer is sure if you want to mow one notch lower, maybe two before winter, you can, but keep in mind this. The longer end of the season that you continue watering, coupled with leaving your lawn a little bit longer, will help your lawn stay greener all winter. It never fails that every year, like in January or February, somewhere across the Midwest or up into the East, there'll be a warm spell and all the snow will melt away. And I'll get pictures from you guys showing me your winter domination pictures where your lawn stayed a few shades greener, in some cases a lot of shades greener, than everyone else's that checked out and went totally brown and dormant. So if you're somebody that cares about that winter domination, then you should definitely leave your lawn a little bit longer all during the winter. It's not really going to hurt anything. However, if you do cut a little bit lower before winter, you can reduce your chances of snow mold in the spring. We don't need to go into snow mold in this video because really it's not anything to worry about. Even if you get a major outbreak of it next spring, it's not a big deal. The winterizer that you're putting down right now will help push it right through and it won't be an eyesore for very long anyway. The thing about snow mold is it's usually caused by prolonged periods where the lawn is covered by a blanket of fresh snow. Now that's good and bad. It's bad in the fact that it actually keeps the soil surface a little bit warmer than the rest of the air outside which does allow that snow mold to kind of percolate under there however the good thing about snow cover all winter is, is it acts as a natural anti-desiccant and what desiccation is is it's basically the drying out of the plant and if your grass plants get too dried out over winter they can die the more important thing to consider with mowing is is that you get all the leaves off you definitely don't want leaves left on the lawn underneath snow now some's going to happen but if you can do the best you can to keep them cleaned off that's the most important thing and mowing is a piece of that because mowing helps clean them up. I'll link in the description below as well as in the eye up here. A video I did several years ago showing you how to know if your leaf cover is too thick to mulch in or if you should bag them up and all that kind of stuff because everybody wants to know about cleaning up leaves as well. Now warm season lawns, it's a whole different thing for us because for the most part our soil never freezes. And if your ground doesn't freeze, then that means your roots don't freeze and the soil biology doesn't freeze, so things are still going on down there and you don't want to neglect them. Even though the lawn's dormant over winter, the soil is not. Now let's look at the warm season growth calendar. You can see that we peak in the middle of the summer and we're way down here on the end of our growth curve. So the last thing we want to be doing to warm season lawns this late in the season is pushing nitrogen, especially because our soils don't freeze and things are still alive and still working down there, albeit slowly. The last thing we want to do is to try to get the lawn to run. We just want to keep our warm season turf chilling, happy, and relaxed. And the best way to do that is to maintain good turgor pressure. Now warm season folks, because your warm season folks now because your ground doesn't freeze you need to keep irrigating all winter long again as long as the ground isn't frozen just because the grass is dormant the soil is not soil organisms are there and some small amount of growth does occur in the turf itself so you want to keep things nice and irrigated So for warm season lawns, keep them irrigated. When someone is sick, what's the first thing you always ask them? Are you properly hydrated? Have you been drinking enough water? In a warm season lawn, it's time of stress is winter because that's when it's going dormant. And the thing that you wanna make sure that it gets during that time of stress is water. And the second thing you can do to help make sure that it maintains that water, that it stays hydrated, that it holds homeostasis is to give it potash. And so the one thing you can give your warm season turf just before winter or even during winter is a nice dose of potash. This is why I have my 0020 Dithiapyr product that'll give you pre-emergence control against invading winter weeds such as Poa annua, hairy bittercress, chickweed, and himbit, but also give you a dose of potash to help that lawn maintain that turgor pressure. And by the way, that's why you've always heard that potassium is good for the lawn during stress. But most people think of that with cool season lawns and summer stress, and that is very true. But also think of it with warm season lawns and winter stress. Again, our ground is not frozen, things are still happening, but it is definitely a time of stress the colder it gets. Keeping a properly hydrated plant is important with your warm season turf. Now, South Florida, just real quick, things are completely different for us. I'm gonna put out a video here later this week and I'm gonna give you the full winter time 
pre-emergent schedule all the way up into the spring, as well as talk about what we can do to continue fertilizing because we're going to be mowing at least weekly all the way here through the winter. And if you're down in Miami and you really want to push things, you could probably keep mowing twice a week. Look for that video later on this week, as well as some fun sprinkler donut videos and some other things that I have coming up. So with that, I'm going to end it here. Please put your questions in the comments below. I'll answer as many as I can because I'm sure I didn't cover everything here. So let's have a discussion in the comments below. And if this video was helpful to you, please hit that like button and subscribe. I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the lawn. So my wife just alerted me that there's something in the pool, a dead animal. So <laughs> let's see what that is. Oh, it's a baby rabbit. Oh, come here, buddy. I got you. Oh, poor little buddy. Oh, how long have you been in there, bud? Let's get you warmed up. Oh, he's cold. I'm going to get him something and dry him off. Oh, look at him. He's already got himself stood up. Here, buddy. Let me get you warmed up. Oh, yeah, you're too cold to run away, aren't you? Okay. All right. Oh. Oh, poor buddy. I know. Yeah, yeah, get some sun. Get warmed up. Let's get you dried off. Really need a hair dryer, but I don't have one. Okay, you're all right. You're all right. Don't worry, the sun's coming out right now. Feel that warm sun? Hmm? Huh? There it is. There it is. There you go. All right, buddy. Let's get you somewhere safe, okay? It's all right. I'm just gonna get you. There you go. Oh, you're good now. There you go. All right. Go back up in there, dude. What's with all these weeds? <laughs>